Hey everybody, thanks for being here. Today it's San Francisco Bay Halibut, and then we're going cranking for bass on Lake Berryessa. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf, and this is Angler West Television. We're at Brisbane Marina near the city of South San Francisco for a morning of San Francisco Bay halibut fishing. On board are Matteo Bacienzi and Todd Storm, along with Captain Steve Gutierrez of Deadly's Cast Sport Fishing. Our rods are rigged with Max Lure sling blades and wiggle hoochies, which will add a tremendous amount of flash and action to our presentation. California halibut, a smaller subspecies of the Pacific halibut, have begun their spring migration into the bay. You don't really see them much on the screen, but there's plenty of bait out here, so they'll be feeding hiding out under the, under the mud. And we're gonna troll right across them and put these flashers and hoochies in their face and try to get them to stick on. So what we're using today is a chef's tackle sling blade. Um, shortly after that, it's a wiggle hoochie. And we got our little trap set up here for our bait. We're gonna put that on a three-way swivel and be trolling that with some uh, fresh tray bait. So, so what I'm doing is I'm just going to measure the bait to the fit accordingly to what we're fishing here. And then, so put this first hook at the bottom of the lip here, just like that. Slide this back. I'm going to put this in the tail, just like that, kind of hide it in there. And then we're going to use a small little rubber band here to keep it on so it doesn't fly off when they strike. Loop it once, should be plenty. Put a little smelt proke here on the sling blade, so it just creates a nice little scent trail right behind our bait and everything we got going on here. And then we're just gonna drop this in, put your sinker on. We're right on the outside of the San Francisco airport, South Bay, uh, San Francisco Bay. And uh, let me pull it up so you can check it out how, it, how this works. Now you see that action there, get the wiggle hoochie right in front, get the sling blade and the bait behind it. So it looks like the bait's chasing the hoochie, the hoochie's chasing this flash, that just gets in their face and they enjoy eating these things. So once it hits bottom, just give it a few feet. It's kind of a new thing for me. I've, I've trolled for halibut before, but never a rig like this. Um, it's got a lot of action. For the line or the leader material here, we're using the P-line. It's the CFX fluorocarbon. Uh, this one right here is 50 pound. As far as our main line, the braid is also a P-Line XDCB braid, um, 65 pounds. That's a, your go-to uh, braid here in the bay. You can catch anything from halibut, salmon, sturgeon, anything you want, it'll handle it. Even some more. So we're, what we're fishing for here is your California halibut. They aren't as big as what you see up north in Washington, Alaska, and whatnot. These aren't the Pacifics, they're a little smaller. So we don't gaff them, um, you can. I like to make sure I, I get them in, not miss that gaff shot. So I have one of these, one of these nets from, from P-Line. It's a, actually a Beckman net. Pretty strong, sturdy. I like using the rubber netting, just in case, just because we're using treble hooks and it comes out a lot easier than your conventional net. So another thing I like to do is use the P-Line Angry Eye Predators. I'll troll one of these behind our, our, our halibut setups. 
and you'd be surprised how many halibut we catch, how many stripers, really big stripers hit this on the troll. And just like you guys fish up in the Delta, put a little worm through it. In the San Francisco Bay, they're mostly feeding on anchovies, smell, some herring. Occasionally we get sardines that come in here. Um, that's pretty much it. So all I do is just kind of let it be on the boat. Give it 40, 50 yards right behind the boat. So how, how fast are we uh, trolling right now? Generally I like to do two and a half to two miles an hour. Um, any slower doesn't really work, faster doesn't work. Um, but between two, two and a half is, is the perfect speed for halibut out here. Another reason we use the sling blades here is they spin perfectly in, in faster conditions, and faster speeds. Unlike other, other dodgers, they'll foul up, get tangled up. So it's my preferred uh, sling blade of choice here. Um, as well as with the wiggle hoochie on there, it also creates a very unique action in the bait. Um, a lot of times they'll see the hoochie and it'll just get them going and they'll chase it, go for the baits. So it's, we got a fish. Here. Try right. that. Nice and easy. Take your time. Welcome back to the San Francisco Bay. I'm Justin Wolf. We're with Captain Steve Gutierrez fishing a spread of whole tray bait using sling blades and wiggle hoochies for attractors. But our first fish, a small one that must be released, has come on a pea line predator minnow. So this is your, your California halibut. It's a small one, real short, but look at those teeth. Look at that big old bait you just tried to inhale. So the California halibut here in, in the San Francisco Bay, Northern California, you're allowed to keep three of these per year, or per day, and they have to be 22 inches each. So, look at those teeth right there. So that's a good sign. We got some small ones. Means, means mom and papa are back home. So, we'll see you later. All right, so as we're trolling here, when we're going against the tide, um, we don't need a drift sock out, but once we're going with it, we're, we'll be going way too fast. So to slow us down, I'll put a drift sock out so we can keep that, that perfect speed for the halibut. Uh, well, generally, I like to fish the shallow areas this time of year. If we come in to spawn, it's shallower, have a higher water temperature. They enjoy that warm water when they come in and spawn. A lot of bait, not too many predators for them. So we're marking bait in the area. All right, fish on. Close, 21. Uh, All right, so this one's a little short, about a half inch too short, but a nice, beautiful fish. See those? Those teeth. We're looking for the fish that are uh, 22 inches and above. Um, generally, we get between 10 and 15 pounds. You know, but uh, anything over 22 is, is ideal for us to keep. That's what uh, what the size limit is here. So that was short. We're gonna go back around and try it again. So what we're using here for our halibut trolling, it's a new rod from Cousin Tackle. It's a CPX 808. Uh, it's a very versatile rod. I use it for anything from Sturgeon, the salmon, halibut, striped bass. You can do link cod if you want it. Some smaller stuff down south, yellowtail. It's a great rod. Nice action, nice parabolic action. Um, it's one of the best rods I've had out here that they've made, uh, especially for trolling. The action is very, it's really important when you troll. You don't want a really stiff rod. Otherwise, your your whole setup and stuff when you're trolling isn't going to have the right action. Take your time. Hey, Mateo, to the left. Yeah. Left a little bit. There we go. Take your time. Yeah, 
Yeah, when it comes to the halibut, you, f when you generally find one, even if they're small, they're never alone. There's always a group of them. Uh, that's a good sign, you see, see fish like that. We had two hits back to back in the same spot. Just keep working it. The big ones are right there too, hanging out. They're almost never alone. We've had a lot of rain this year, all this storms and stuff in the winter time. Normally, we're getting into these fish really good right now, but now that it's stopped raining, it's been a few weeks, no rain, water's clearing up, you can see, see the clarity of the water. It's nice and green. Um, these fish are starting to come in from the ocean so they can start spawning. Uh, so this is a good opportunity. We've had no rain, two and a half weeks probably. The water's getting salty again. They're starting to show up. There's bait in the bay. They're biting. So Hey Todd, can you put it in neutral? Sneak them up to me. Oh, no, 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 no. I got it, I got it. Yeah! You first. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. 23? Yeah. Yep. We had some smaller ones earlier, but it is early in the season. Normally, we're doing this in April, towards the end of this month, too. Um, but it's a good sign. They're here. We lost a couple earlier. We had some, some, some baits that were hit really hard, but it is a keeper. It's, it's a great eater. Nice and healthy, nice and fresh. So, the bigger ones are coming. With the heavy rains this year, Lake Berryessa is full of water and full of bass wanting to move up the spawn. Today we're with Todd Storm, Jack Geist, and Logan Schwab. We're going to go uh, mid-lake, we're going to go cranking for some smallmouth, largemouth, and spotted bass. Uh, the bite's been pretty good. Um, should have a lot of fun today. i got two young anglers with me, uh, Jack and Logan. Uh, they're starting to fish the uh, college and high school Bassmasters and FLW tours right now and uh, so we're gonna do a little cranking with the boys today. Should be a lot of fun. Alright, you boys ready? Let's get some fish. There's usually some big spots around here too. There he is. There we go. Oh yeah. Two, double. Oh yeah, small mouth. Damn. That's a nice fish right there. Oh yeah. Popped right out. Got me a little white swim bait. So uh, two right off the bat for the boys. It's two against one today, they're going to be after me, so i got to step it up today. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, we just found a little pocket of smallmouth and should be a few more here. Smallmouth have all moved up right now. They're ready to go right now. Yeah, I caught my fish on a crawdad pattern, whipless crank, and it's uh, just slow rolling it. Hit right near the boat. Fishing off this brush right here seemed to have just got tapped right as I slow rolled it past it. Hey Jack, uh, what's the water temp right now? It's uh, 62 degrees. Yeah, so we, uh, we have a surface temp of 62. Uh, I brought a fish hawk temperature gauge that I can drop down. Um, and I can drop it down about five feet and see what the temperature is there. Um, it should be a couple degrees uh, cooler down there. So we'll find out here in a minute. So this is a fish hawk and this is how it works. You just press start. It'll flash ready. Uh, uh, air temperature is like 66.6 .6 right now. Uh, I'll just drop it down. We're in about uh, nine feet of water. So it's on the bottom. So let's see what we got here. Now we're just going to hit view. So surface temp is 61.9. We'll go down. Five feet, 61.5, 10 feet, 61.4. So the, the water's pretty stable all the way down about 10 feet, which is great because these fish want to be in that warmer water right now. They're warming up their eggs. They want to get on the spawn. And uh, there we go. Fish, good one. Yeah, little guy. There we go, nice small mouth. 
I'm on a little bit deeper diver style crankbait here. Chunky, you know, just getting ready to spawn. Let him go. Todd just caught one out deep and uh, we're here in some rocky ledge right here. So I'm gonna throw this fire tiger pattern crankbait. Should go about 12 feet, which is just at the depth they're at. Throw it right across that point there, yeah. I'm, I'm fishing a, a deep diving crankbait here. What I'm doing is um, just bouncing off these rocks here. I'm just digging it down there as, as far as I can and just bouncing over these rocks trying to get a reaction bite. Uh, these fish are, you know, right on top of these rocks and you want to get that bait deflecting off these rocks to get their attention. This water's a little murky, so I'm using a chartreuse and brown color to, uh, Small mouth. Came off. So right now I'm throwing a crowdad colored crankbait, rock crawler, spro. Um, I really like these baits. They just click along the rocks, rocks and don't really get caught up very often. But right now the water seems to be a little bit darker. So Jack just over there got bit on the chartreuse. Got a little flare in there, it's a little bit brighter, so I think I'm gonna switch it up. Get a little bit more bright color in there, see if I can't get bit. Yeah, this will, this will show up a little bit better in this darker water. Uh, it's pretty brown. Uh, the contrast, uh, I think that color right there is just too close to the color of the water right now, so you want something to contrast this water. Nice, I think a better one. Oh, oh yeah. Welcome back to Lake Berryessa. I'm Justin Wolf. Several years ago, Todd Storm began teaching Jack Geist and Logan Schwab the basics of bass fishing. And today, both Jack and Logan have begun to pursue tournament bass fishing. Today, they're getting a lesson on springtime cranking. That's a nice model. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. So, you know, the lesson there, guys, is, you know, we, we already fished this already with the shallow stuff. We came back with the deep divers. And now we're picking up a little bit bigger, color on there. a little bit bigger fish. Found it a little bit easier. I'm sure you like that pro here too. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. I think now nah. it's the hot little smallie. Oh, no, he's he's bigger than I thought. It's a small mouth because you can tell he's, he's digging down there. He's hot. There we go. That's a small mouth. I like this uh, Yeti hopper, it keeps uh, my drinks cold. Um, I'm not even using ice anymore, I'm just using these ice packs. And it keeps my drinks cold all day long. Fish. Oh, fish on. Double. That's a jack. It's a nice small mouth. Take it. The shallow diving crankbait here on the rocks. Put in the live well, Jack. Live well? Yeah. I'll take some pictures. All right. Oh, yeah. Big one. Nice one. Stay down. Stay down, baby. Uh oh. Stay down. Oh, he came off. Oh, man. That was about a five pounder. Oh. oh well, darn it. Man. Oh man. I'm using a spinning rod for this uh, short bill bait. It's, it's pretty light, it's about three eighths. Uh, I like a spinning rod because I can sling it a lot further than a bait caster. Uh, I can really get it out there and cover a lot of ground. Uh, just helps having the spinning rod. You know, if the wind comes up too, I, you know. These lighter baits are a lot easier to throw with the spinning rod. 
another nice small mouth. Oh, they're fired up. A little small mouth too. Jack's on fire, baby. Get him, Jack. Oh, quick release. I think we found a pile of smallmouth here. Oh, yeah. Nice big small. Oh, big spot. Look at that big spot. Big little pig. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. There's a chunky spot. There we go. There's another big one. Oh, yeah. Oh, spot. Another big spot. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, hey. There we go. There you go. Oh man, get the, uh, maybe get the net. Yeah, get the net for me. Oh, no, he's he's Still a good fish though. It's not a bad small net. Oh boy. They are fired up, boys. Oh, that's a nice big small mouth. Whoa. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, the show would not be possible. So please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing.